or welcome back to Loaded Landscapes. My name's Simon Plant, and today we're going to be looking at the spot removal tool within Lightroom. So today we're going to be looking at the spot removal tool, um, uh, which is located up here, and uh, this is a tool. I don't use a huge amount. I'll use it uh, for maybe cleaning up my images, like bits of dust on the sensor, which I always seem to have plenty of. Um, but if I was doing some sort of me sort of heavy lifting, uh, retouching, personally, uh, and it is personal, I would go to Photoshop to do that. However, the uh, the spot removal tool within Lightroom has some um, advantages. Um, obviously, we're working on, uh, or we can be working on raw files, and if you've got a picture which which is maybe you've put the camera on a tripod and you've taken a, a picture and nothing much has moved in terms of your composition in the picture and let's say you wanted to remove uh, this flag which is what we're going to do today and you wanted to do that in, in say six or seven pictures or what have you um, you can actually obviously do this once and then transfer those settings across all your images as, a, as I said as long as things haven't moved too much so that saves a lot of time rather than manually having to go into each image to retouch it maybe in Photoshop uh, you've got the capabilities within Lightroom to do it once and apply the same settings to all the images which is great it's a big time saver and the tool is a lot better than it used to be so today we're going to take this image and we're going to just for a bit of fun and uh, I'm going to show you how I would approach the tool. It is a little bit more limited in Lightroom. Um, or how I'd use it to remove something like this flagpole. Okay, so let's say we want to remove this flagpole for whatever reason. Uh, what I would do is make sure we go up to the Navigator and make sure we can get in quite close to the area where we want to uh, retouch, um, and then which is this one here, I'm assuming we get the right flag and like I said we can, we can zoom to 3 to 1 there uh, we want to get the uh, spot removal tool here and the first thing we want to take you through is the settings here now we can choose with this tool to either clone or heal much like in Photoshop the cloning is like the stamp uh, stamp cloning tool there it'll it'll clone but it won't sort of Sort of blend in uh, the 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 area and sort of match the uh, texture or the noise in the picture, um, th and so most of the time you probably want to put it on a heel, which will actually try and uh, match the, the the textures and stuff in the image and also the luminosity. So it does generally does a better blending uh, of the image. However, there is points uh, in the image where you'll come across that it doesn't work so well, and we we probably will come across that a bit later on. So for the most part, I'm going to leave this on heel. We can obviously adjust the size of our brush and the feathering, and I'd I'd imagine you know somewhere around 40 is a good starting point. And again, you can change that even after the fact of applying it uh, to alter the the look of the uh, the cloned area. Opacity generally 100%. So we just want to start. Um, we can also choose whether we want to. Um, view the brush tip at all times or when it's selected or never sometimes you want to toggle these and again we'll leave it on auto for now and I'll show you that as we go along uh, this thing visualize spots is basically for dust okay so you don't need to worry about that in, that in this video uh, but that is useful if you're trying to find uh, dust sensor that little uh, button there will help you achieve that now my first tip would be don't try and do all of uh, this in one go I would do it in stages and what we can do is make sure we've got the brush selected and the right settings we feel we need and the first thing we're going to do is just in fact I'm going to zoom out one-to-one -one. that's better so now we can see what we're doing make sure the brush is the right size uh, we're on healing at the moment and I'm just going to start by drawing up along the flagpole again we don't want to do too much in one go now Photoshop will automatically find a cloning source point to transfer the data from and uh, sometimes it gets it spot on other times it didn't do a very good job but you can do two things you can uh, press the backspace on your keyboard and that will actually move uh, and recalculate a, a new spot uh, sometimes it's better sometimes it's worse um, um, and if all else fails, just grab the area and put it where you believe is a good source point. 
So somewhere like that looks better. Um, now, if I just zoom in, you'll see, I'll see about the edges. Uh, in some parts of the picture, it starts to go a bit mushy. It's not too bad on this part, but it may become more evident as we move on through the image. So let's just go to one-to-one -to -one again. Uh, so I'm just going to now paint another area, like so. And it's not too bad, but I think I'm going to bring it this side. And that's pretty good. So, so far, so good. And then finally, down here, which I think we may have a problem with uh, with the healing brush. Okay, that's completely the wrong spot. So, we just put it over this side. And now you can see it's gone, kind of gone quite mushy around this area. So, what I'm going to do now is move to the clone area. Uh, stamp tool as opposed to the healing brush i should also point out you can if these start getting in the way you can always turn them off um to never just to turn them off while you're working while you're just viewing stuff um and or have them on auto like i have so sometimes it's good to turn them off so now i'm going to attempt to go over the flag bit and i'm going to try so going to use a clone uh option on this bit and what we might need to do then is go over this afterwards with the uh, healing option just to smooth it in. Uh, that's not looking too bad. So that's uh, looking pretty good so far. We may need to come back in here and just have a little uh, adjustment there. But uh, for now, let's move down a bit. Uh, this bit's going to be a bit, little bit more tricky because we've got the uh, the rest of the flagpole here where it hits the building. And we need this to be a little bit of a sharper transition. We don't want it to go kind of just blend into nothing because it's going to look stupid. So I need to kind of see if I can't just clone across here. So let's do it on heel for now. And I'm going to try, uh, try to just go over the area here like so see what that does move that across there a little bit um, let's feather it a bit further okay it's not looking too bad okay um, it's still a little bit it's not perfect um, which annoys me <laughs> but that's just me uh, just see, see by just moving the feather in, it can it can ha sometimes help uh, quite a bit. Uh, I'm just wondering if let's try a different source point. Let's try it over this side. Uh, okay, it's worth a try. All right, so let's let's call that a day there for now. Still not 100% happy with it. Maybe it just needs a better a better area to clone from. Move the feathering up a little bit. Okay, I think that's probably about the best I'm going to get for now. So let's see if we can clean this edge up a little bit, make it a bit more crisp by cloning. So I'm going to click on clone, and I'm going to make the brush a little bit bigger, somewhere like that. Um, might have to come in a bit, somewhere like that there. And let's make sure we can see what we're doing. I don't know why it's gone all the way up there, but it has. Uh, this is where it gets a bit fiddly. Okay, and I'll bring that in like so. Okay, we are uh, we are zoomed in quite a bit now, so we can zoom out in a minute and have a better look. But uh, okay, that's not looking too bad. Let's just turn these off. There's probably a shortcut for these overlays, um, but um, I don't know what it is. <laughs> I don't use it enough. So let's just feather this up a little bit. Uh, no, that's not doing too good. Okay, what we can do as well is we'll turn this back on. If we're not happy with that, we can uh, alter the size of it somewhat. And even drag it in a little bit there. I might even drag this across a bit. What we might have to do actually is also do another brush stroke. That's not looking too bad. Maybe do another brush stroke now uh, for this part. 
um, and uh, do the upright okay that's not gonna look too bad I don't think let's just zoom out one to one so it's not perfect it could do still do a little bit more work um, let's zoom in again still do a little bit more work down the bottom here but you get the idea you can now go pack over perhaps with a healing brush and try and clean up some of these areas a bit it does get a bit fiddly as i said because there's a lot of these overlays um i should also mention i've realized after uh, after i said it if you want to sort of uh use a different source point and you don't want to manually move it which I don't see why you wouldn't want to do it it's not the backslash it's the forward slash key which if you're on a mac is by the exclamation uh, the uh, question mark on the keyboard in the bottom right hand corner so I apologize for that it's the forward slash not the backslash um but like i said it's easy just to move these uh, uh, by hand but um yeah that's not looking too bad i'll just pull that in a little bit but you can fiddle around this for uh, for all you uh, for a lot longer than I've uh, shown you here. But I think you can see with just a little bit of patience, um, you can achieve what you set out to do uh, with that tool. It is easier in Photoshop, I'm not going to lie to you, uh, in my opinion, because I use Photoshop a lot, so it's what you're used to. Uh, but as I said, the advantage of doing it in Lightroom is that if you want to apply those settings to another identical image, um, you know, with, where nothing's moved too much, you've already done the hard work and it should clone straight across uh, to, the little, pardon the pun, to the other image. You might have to adjust little bits slightly, uh, but uh, it's a big time saver on some images. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to catch you on the next one. Cheers for watching.